Hey team, sometimes it does not make sense for you to be a battlefield leader at the front of the charge, charging the hill with your with your carrying the flag. Sometimes it makes sense for you to be a battlefield leader at the back of the charge with your table um, and plotting out the maps. So I've done both and uh, like I, I'm going to go into here, but uh, there are reasons. So one, you know, it may be that you're a great leader, but your technical skill set doesn't belong on the front. You know, there are people on your team that are better on the front line than you. And the biggest thing is that when you are running that charge, you're ignoring the rest of the charges. You are creating a risk in the organization because you're leading a charge which should have been delegated and there are other charges which you should be involved in also leading um now if it's if your company has a singular objective or you're making one one big push and it's an all hands effort uh you know for a product release or something and everyone's involved then sure yes be involved please um but if you are managing 15 different projects for the organization you can't possibly be involved in charging the hill on all of them. And uh, that's something I've been guilty of is trying to do too much. You know, trying to be involved in all the client onboardings and all the client implementation projects and and every incident and everything. And uh, you know, your your calendar fills fills up with meetings for everything when you're actually not adding a ton of value because your team has this. You know, you, you need to be handling the top level business objectives rather than uh, trying to be involved in everything that your team does. So uh, trust your team and let them lead. And and that, and that can be hard. That can be hard if you're not used to letting go of the reins. Um, it's something I've actually gotten really good at. I expect my team to perform now. I expect them to. If I have to be involved with everything they do, I hired the wrong people and I need to replace them. In my point of view... I should not have to be involved in the things of the everyday things that are happening. And my team should be able to carry the ball and perform very well without me. If anything, I should be in the way when I get involved. When they're without me, they should have processes and operations and, and, and just knock it out of the park. Um, you know, when I'm involved, it's like, Hey boss, Hey boss, Hey boss. You know, it shouldn't be, um, I shouldn't be involved like that. Uh, you know, hiring smart people, hiring uh, responsible people is is has always been a mission of mine. And it's worth that investment so that you're not having to be individually involved in every project. That being said, that management style of mine does not agree with everyone. Some, um, you know, superiors that I've had, some top level executives have wanted me to meet me to be involved with every little detail they've been like hey art you're not you know walking them through this you're not doing this with them what do you mean i'm their leader i have 15 other things to do they have their their project plan and they're going forward with it i don't need to be involved but 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 you know how are you you know and then it's like now it's then they want me to measure their success and all this stuff and i'm like okay um I'm, I'm looking at their, I'm keeping in touch with them. Everything seems like it's going well, um, things like that. So uh, different levels of management want different things. And some people expect like a micromanagement approach. There's not enough of me to go around. I have to hire smart people and trust them to do their job. So where are you w with your management, you know, whether you're, at frontline management or whether you're leading a whole organization, do you have the ability to delegate and then manage performance and train and mentor and lead other initiatives? Or are you stuck with the tactical execution of everything? Now, I prefer to be in strategic mode myself. Um, you know, some tactical planning, sure. But if I'm involved in tactical execution of everything, um, there's a problem. So right now I straddle really marketing, sales, security, IT operations, um, 
I'm doing a lot of external outreach and speaking at conferences and things like that. I'm involved in a lot of things and I'm depending on my team to pick up the slack. And uh, I, I expect that I don't have to be involved in those things. So that's just my approach, but everybody's different. Some people like to be super involved in everything. When I'm getting involved in things, people know that they're making mistakes. Um, I'm usually getting involved in things when it's visible that there's a problem and that they're not getting it right. And I have to get involved to help them realign and fix their processes. Other than that, I let them go because I trust them to do a good job. Over the years, as I've been a leader and I've gone through all these situations and grown personally, I've gone through different leadership styles. So it's important to explore those. And, you know, there's a lot of resources out there for exploring leadership styles. And your styles will vary from situation to situation. They aren't always the same. You know, different, uh, you know, hierarchies and corporate environments dictate different styles and also different teams that you're working and managing and leading. Uh, you know, their skill sets, their own egos and personalities may dictate a different type of leadership style. But in a lot of leadership, I've always been the one that has kind of been the trench warfare battlefield leader. So I'm the one, you know, who's carrying the flag and running down, you know, I'm, I'm Braveheart, who is sitting there, you know, running across the field and, you know, swinging the sword at the bad guy, um, you know, and making sure that my team is following me in the battle. And I always felt that that, that was a great way to lead because I should never ask somebody on my team to do something that I'm completely unwilling to do myself. Um, you know, delegation is important. And, you know, I'll delegate to my team most of the time when I'm able to and, uh, you know, give them that responsibility. But I'm not going to give them something to do that is something I'm unwilling to do myself. So it's important for them to see me jump into the trenches, you know, bayonet in my hand and, and, and doing what I can to take care of the enemy. You know, that means I'm pulling all nighters with them fixing servers. That means I'm working late on the weekend on a wiring job or on an emergency or something that came in last minute. That means when there's that incident response that comes in at the end of the day on Friday, I'm leading the charge that's important for a leader to do to give them your respect and to show them that you are willing to do this also if the leader of the company is willing to do this why shouldn't they now as i've you know in the last couple of years because of how my position has changed around sometimes i'm not leading a team like that sometimes i'm in even a more executive position where I'm making business-wide sweeping decisions and there's five layers of managers between me and actually getting the work done. I hate that. We've gotten rid of that recently, so it's more like one, but uh, I've been in situations where it's been a, a, a steep and strict hierarchy, in which case I'm not really welcome working with that team. Um, I'll try to, but, you know, especially when they're doing an all hands call, like, please, someone, everyone help, you know, I'll jump in. But in that, in those cases, a lot of times I'm that revolutionary war general that's in the back at the, at the tables, you know, moving chess pieces around on the board while people are dying on the front lines. Um, I'm that kind of leader. So, um, so in that case, my bayonet's not getting bloody. It's, you know, if it comes to it, I might the battle might come to me. But, uh, you know, in those cases, you're completely delegating. So I've done both, and I do both well. And I've adapted which I'm doing depending on the situation, the hierarchy, the team, you know, 
uh, what I'm really supposed to do uh, based on, you know, my responsibilities also. Uh, sometimes it's like I have 40 things going at once and I can't jump in with a thing because I'm then I'll cause the other 39 to fail. So I need to stay out of it and above it. But other times I can single-minded focus and jump in with the team. So those are just some things to think about is that, you know, sometimes you're in there with the team leading and sometimes you're leading from the general's desk. But, uh, you know, it does give your team more respect and it builds more influence when you're in there with them. So don't just take a stance of I'm always going to be this uh, general revolutionary war general um, at the back table stance to life because that doesn't build influence and respect from your team. It just doesn't.